All right, we got a little down and dirty project here. I started this last night and it got dark and rainy and it kind of shut me down. This is going to be a very quick, simple tire bead breaker. I didn't actually measure anything last night when I was doing this. It was all just to eye. So we've got two pieces that are 36 inches. We got a piece that's, I don't know, about a foot. And it's 11 inches with a 45 on the end. How long is this piece? And this piece is 27. So we're going to do a little welding here. the rain. Awesome. That's not quite square, but we're not aiming for perfect on this build. You know what? That's as much as we're getting done this time. We're gonna go back. Oh. That's why a clean work area is a good idea. I just uh, had these two pieces sitting here and stepped on one of them. And it rolled under me. The rain stopped. We were able to get back out, get some more weld on it. I didn't bother recording any of that. None of it's all that pretty. We have another piece that we also welded. Again, it's not pretty, but it doesn't need to be for this. This is going to be our shoe that actually presses down to break the bead. since cut these pieces we have four of these and these are going to get welded on like that except you know straighter so that a bolt can go through and it'll hook into another piece and be able to pivot so that's going to be our braking shoe this is going to be our arm that we actually push on. And we've got another little piece we're just going to throw across there to give it a little stability because it's pretty narrow. And I don't have anywhere to bolt this down. It's just going to be sitting on the ground. Well, we're done. We've added our brace out here for some stability. These two pieces are obviously not the same length because it's crooked, but I don't think I used a tape measure at all in building this. I have no idea how long this is, well over three feet. We uh, split a piece that's still warm, welded it on. We got a piece of 3 8 ready rod through there as a pivot. I don't have any nuts here though. 
but that'll work for today. And we got our breaker shoe, which we may try to move in a hole now that I'm looking at this. Let's see if I can. Yeah, that works. The GoPro is currently clamped to my welding helmet. So we'll pull that out, move that back a hole, shove that in. We still get a good range of movement. So now it's time to go find a tire and see how this thing works. Alright, let's see what happens. Butter. That's the front side. So we'll come in for a closer look. Get the shoe on the edge drop down into the rims probably better and then push down kind of rest the bar on your shoulder this would be easier if I wasn't holding the camera give it a little turn and another push we're broken down. So, yeah. That's maybe an hour of screwing around. And we have this. No tape measure. A grinder. Some zip cut wheels. Grinding wheel. And a welder. There's probably a way you could do it without the welder, but the uh, the cutting wheel is definitely necessary. So in the words of Billy Mays, but wait, there's more. Can anybody guess what this does? Yes, I know this is bent, but it doesn't matter. This is conveniently two by two, so we have one hole drilled out. That'll slide in the receiver hitch and pin in. We can drop a tire rim down on there, drop a bolt down through, slot it so it'll work with any rim, and uh, flip it off with a bar. So let's go get this set up and see how it works. We have a bolt with a wing nut. Grab some oil. All right, we have some lubrication. It's like four parts, no, yeah, four parts water, one part dish soap. A little hole in the top.
bar probably is a little too thick for this too. Just like that. That is way easier than trying to flip it with bars. So now we need our mounting bar. We'll see if that'll work out for us. So I'm not sure if this is going to work or not. It's still a little hot. I don't really need this, but I figured if I'm going through this trouble, I should make one. tools to the back side. So now this is gonna work now. That side to the piece wants to roll. What I should have done is weld the bar on the bottom, I think, and ground more of a hook in there to hook the rim. So we're going to go and do that and we'll check back. We've ground the hook in deeper. We've cut the bar off of this side and put it on this side to hopefully stop the torque. Okay, so we just went and took, this is still hot, a little out of this area. Now, well, that shows up. Because it didn't look like it was making very good contact. This thing is still pretty hot, too, so I'm going to wear gloves. So, let's see how this goes.
bucks ish I know it kicked the bar out but these tires are a pain in the balls even on a tire changer a lot of the time so it's all good I didn't really need this back on here but I wanted to test things out I've also I've also taken the flap wheel and cleaned up these corners because they were digging in. They're kind of a pretty blunt corner. That was way easier than last time. The tire actually pushed back onto the rim on the back. And that's all there is to it. Scrap. So is the rim for that matter, but reach in. Undo our wing nut. Push our bolt through. We're done. Well, that was pretty simple. Thanks for watching. Try a steel wheel. Aha. Uh -huh. It does not fit. But we made this adjustable, so we're good. This is a little snow. <laughs> oh, stop, Cleo. The dog seeing the lights. Bring it in. Bring it up against the wheel. There is possibly still air in this tire. I just thought of that. 
That's not my knife. That's my knife. Again, this is just going for scrap, so. Let's cut the valve stem. I don't have core tool here, so we don't have much of options. Tire's been on this wheel. We'll just keep working our way around. Yeah, this has been laying around for a while. There's a worm. So that is rusted the hell on there. that. Alright. A little bit of lube. See, this is why that tire was so hard to break down, because that is nasty. 
and the rim is no better if it wasn't for that rust that uh, pretty well fell off the bead with our breaker. As you can see, the rim has got some movement, but it really doesn't matter as long as it can't spin. The Grand Dam wheel, this was only maybe a quarter of an inch smaller, but this Ford wheel, it's an inch. But as long as it can't spin, it'll be good. I got, it's even got some up and down because that bolt's got a shoulder. Well, I think that's going to be all for this time. Thanks for watching. See you next time.